All right, guys, what time is it? Preach the Word. We've been looking at symbols of Jesus, and we're looking at the symbols from the Gospel of John that Jesus used to describe himself. You guys remember any of them? The bread of heaven, light of the world. So we've seen bread from heaven. Uh, just like bread feeds our physical lives, keeps us alive, Jesus keeps us spiritually alive. Okay? Uh, he's the light of the world. He, he enlightens every man. He, he's the door of the sheep, the only way of salvation, the only way to be cared for by God. He's the good shepherd, okay? the, the shepherd who knows his sheep, and that hence he's able to care for them, lays down his life for the sheep. And so we've seen all those. Today we're looking at John 11, the next one, and this is what he says. Jesus says to her, that is to Martha, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Okay, there's our statement. And then he says, whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And so remember, as we look at these symbols, guys, the first thing we need to ask ourselves is, well, what does this symbol mean? Right? What is Jesus teaching us with this physical symbol? Okay? And so... The first thing is to recognize there's two symbols, really, in it. What are they? He says, I am the resurrection, okay, and I am the life. Now, they're, 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 they're connected closely, and that's why we have them both, and that's why we're dealing with them both together, okay? But there's two. He's the resurrection, and he's the life, okay? And so, right after that, then he gives his first statement, describes... What it means that he's the resurrection. So whoever believes in me, whoever believes in Jesus, whoever believes into Jesus is connected to Jesus by faith. Whoever believes in me, though he die, okay? You physically die, okay? If that happens, yet yeah, what's going to happen? Yet yeah, he shall live. That's the resurrection. Raising the dead to life, okay? And then... So he also, the next statement, then he describes what it means that he's the light, okay? So you see the green? So what does it mean that Jesus is the light? Well, everyone who lives, that's alive, you alive? Yep, okay? Everyone who lives and believes in me, so there it is again, who's connected to Jesus through faith, okay? Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Shall never die. What do you call that if you never die? It's eternal. It's eternal life. It's not talking about physical life. As he's just described people who believe, they do die. So we're talking Jesus through believing in him. He's the life. In him will never die. And we'll talk about what that means that he's our spiritual life as we go through this. So uh, um, to get a little bit of the context, you guys are familiar with the story. We're not going to talk a lot about it. But understand, it says, in a few verses earlier, it says, now when Jesus, had, he came, he came to Bethany, because he heard his friend had died. He says he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Okay? And so what we need to understand is, as Jesus comes, Lazarus was a good friend of Jesus's. And Lazarus had at least two sisters. Do you, you remember their names? Martha, the one he was just talking to, and Mary. Okay? And so he comes in, and, and he's friends with them, okay? And he comes in to them, and, but notice what the gospel writer, uh, John, is letting us understand is he's been in the tomb for four days, okay? I think the King James says, he stinketh, huh? He stink Four days, guys, like de decomposing, decaying starts happening after three days, okay? If you think of like roadkill, and, and understand, are people animals? No, we're created in the image of God. Okay, animals aren't. That's why it's not a sin to kill and eat animals. Okay, but animals are kind of similar to us. Okay, because they have physical bodies like us, don't they? They're more like us than trees, right? And so animals, their bodies, if they get hit by a car, oftentimes we don't pick them up like we would if it was a person. Okay, and so if they lay there in the heat, what happens to those bodies? They start to can, but they'll swell up, they'll stink bad, okay? They'll, they'll, they'll get real big. And so here's Lazarus in a hot, deserty area. He's been dead for four days, okay? 
Now, we, we all know what's Jesus going to do with Lazarus. He's going to raise him from the dead. We know that. Okay? I knew you guys knew that. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time there, but it's a picture of what's going to happen. But understand, guys, Jesus has raised the dead a lot. Uh, Pastor Josh uh, led us just a couple weeks ago in how Jesus, remember, he interrupted a funeral and raised the widow's son. Okay? So, the guys, the funeral happened right away. This, guys, is a little different than other times Jesus raised the dead. Lazarus was dead. He's stinking. He's been in there a while. Now, the thing we need to understand about death is two things. Okay, number one is we need to understand the certainty of death. The certainty of death. In other words, all people are going to die. Like, most people don't debate that. You know that? Why don't people debate that all people are going to die? People debate everything about the Bible. But why don't people debate that? Because everybody does die. In fact, look out. Look, look at that. Look at every single one of them. You see them? Look at their faces. Guess what, guys? Guess what you can say with certainty? If Christ doesn't come back, we have to add that caveat. But if Christ doesn't come back, Jesus tarries, guys. Every one of them will be dead and buried like Lazarus. Every one of them. Okay? In fact, it's not just them out there. Okay? Look in here. Look close. The person you see, guess what's going to happen? Guess what is certainly going to happen? What's going to certainly happen? You're going to die, guys. Now, we don't, in our culture, we don't like thinking about that. We don't, oh, no, no, you kids don't even probably give it a thought much. As you get older, you'll start to get to be my age, you'll start to think, well, how, how many years do I have left? How can I make them count? You get even older, you start to really appreciate every day you have because you realize it's not going to keep going on. It's what, what, what Brother Weston shared, life is a mist. It, it goes fast, guys. It's hard for you to believe, but ask Mr. Robert after service. It goes fast, okay? <laughs> and so the point is, guys, is we are going to die. And the other thing, the other thing that people don't debate is it's pretty final, okay? It's pretty final. There's a finality to death. Uh, a lady talking to King David, not going to get into the context, but the, 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 the point she's making is accurate, and it, it will help us understand. She says this, and she's talking to King David. She says, we must all die. That's the certainty of death. Why are all people going to die? Sin is a consequence of... Or death is a consequence of... Sin. sin. We're all sinners. We're going to die. It's appointed every man to die. We must all die, she says. And then she says... We are like water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. I like water. You guys? Yeah. If I'm drinking my water and then I go like that, do you pick that up and put it back in here so I can have another sip? So you can't gather it up, right? It's impossible. You can't gather that up and put it back in here. And what she's saying, guys, that's a perfect point. Is when somebody dies, guys, we can't raise them up, can we? We can't make them alive again. Like, human beings can do a lot, guys. There's, there's artificial intelligence, which is scary stuff, but it is crazy what human beings can do. Or think about this. Guys, we can get into a 135,000-pound tin can and fly for hours and go to another continent. Thousands of feet in the air. Like, human beings figured out how to do that. Like 200 years ago, that was almost unthinkable, okay? And yet we can do that. And we take, we don't even give it a thought how amazing that is. We, in fact, human beings, if we find people who have died in the right, in the right circumstance, we can resuscitate them if their hearts stop. We have, we have things that can get their hearts to go back and, and get them. It's not a resurrection, it's a resuscitation. See, we can do a lot. We can keep people alive even when... Their, body, their brains aren't telling their, their bodies what they need to do. Like we, guys, human beings can do a lot, but you want to know what human beings cannot do? They can't put the water back in the cup. They cannot raise the dead. They can't. They can, I mean, guys, people have tried to keep the dead alive for as long as they, they can. Okay? And so the point is, guys, and what that's pointing us to is that Jesus can. Jesus has power that, that is far greater than anything human beings can do. And he can raise the dead because he's the life. Right. He's the source of all life. 
And so when Jesus speaks, he gives life. Okay? He says, let there be, and there is. He says, Lazarus, come forth. And what happens? That dead, decaying body comes to life and, and comes out of that tomb. So do you understand what he's saying? This is if Jesus can do that, guys, Jesus can do, he can raise anyone. And that's what we're getting to. So Jesus, he says to Martha, your brother's going to rise again. And so she says, well, I know that he's going to rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So she's talking in general terms, guys. She, she knows that there's going to be a resurrection. When is it going to be? On the last day. That's right. You guys remember from the catechism. When we studied through the catechism, trying to understand what the Bible teaches. Remember? Will Christ come again? Yes. At the last day. Just like Martha said. At the last day, he will come to judge the world. And then it asks... What happens to men when they die? You guys remember this one? Callista's got, she's something to do with our body and something to do with our soul. She's right on, okay? The body returns to dust, guys. This is why Christians, historically, traditionally, we bury the dead bodies of those who go on. Okay? They return to the dust. That's where the body goes. But guys, when we bury a brother or sister, is there soul in that body? It is not. See, the soul goes to be with God if they have life, if they're connected to Jesus, or they go to a place of suffering, okay? the outer darkness, a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth, a place to wait for judgment. Those are the only two options. When somebody dies, their body goes in the ground, and their soul goes to one of those two places. Okay? But do their souls stay like that? No. Okay? Will the bodies of the dead be raised again? Yes. There shall be a resurrection of the dead of both the unjust and the just. See, guys, here's the thing. If Christ can call out Lazarus, come forth, and this dead man, decaying, decomposing body, can raise up and come forward, can Jesus, when he comes, shout out to all those in the tomb, come forth? Yes. And will they? John 5, guys, read it. That's exactly what happens when he comes back. He gives life to all. But now specifically, guys, we're talking about the life he gives is only to those who have spiritual life. The dead are raised who don't know him are raised to be judged and sent to hell. Okay? And we learn that in the catechism. But the point that I want us to see is this, guys. Jesus is addressing both Lazarus and Martha. And guys, it affects us, no matter where we find ourselves. See? See, what did, what did Lazarus need? Where was Lazarus when he said these words? He was dead in a tomb. And Jesus said, whoever believes in me, though he died, like Lazarus. What? Yeah, he's going to live. Jesus raised him up just to show his power so we know he will one day raise us for good. Okay? And, but what did Martha need? Was Martha dead in the tomb? No. He said, everyone who lives and believes in me, let's say that, that was Martha, shall never die. Shall never die. Okay, now physically we will, but guys, our soul will be with Christ forever. And so how do we obey this, guys? Well, how do we obey it? Well, number one, we ask ourselves the same question Jesus asked. What did Jesus ask? Do you believe this? Do you believe that this is who Jesus is? Jesus says it this way in John 6. This is the will of the Father, of him who sent Jesus. What's the will? That Christ should lose nothing of all that, he, uh, that the Father has given him, but raise it up on the last day. There it is, guys. Jesus is going to raise up all who know him, all that the Father has given him. This is the will of my Father, he says, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him Okay? is connected to him, shall what? Have eternal life. Shall never die. It's the same thing. Shall never die. And I will raise him up on the last day. Is, is Christ going to lose any of his people? No. None. He says it one more time a couple verses later. No one can come to me unless the Father draws him. God has to work in our hearts. But if he does, what's the confidence we have as Christians? That Christ will raise us up on the last day. He has defeated death, guys. And that's why he's the resurrection 
and the life. Let's pray and thank him for who he is. Dear God, we thank you for sending Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. Help us to be connected to him through faith that we would have eternal life, uh, life in the fullest, uh, both here and now while we walk this earth and, and indeed for eternity, even after we die. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys.